In today's video, we're going to be making an elemental bending game in Scratch, and even though the trend's kinda already dead, screw trends, I'm still doing it anyway. I apologize for not uploading for the past few weeks, I was just really busy with a lot of other stuff, but that being said, this project took over a month and is by far the largest one I've ever made, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So, we're in a new project, and just to get things started, I'm going to import this basic platformer script from one of our earlier games, uh, just so we have something to work with, and for now, our character is just going to be a cube. I know, so original. Anyways, uh, this is the plan. It's going to be a platformer game, where you start as a firebender and defeat other elemental masters, such as water, earth, and air, which each victory, you unlock new skills, which help you defeat the next master. The final boss, of course, will be the avatar. However, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's design a basic firebending attack. Using the simple particle system, we can create this little blast effect which will be our basic move, aka the one with the least cooldown. Secondly, after animating a little fire punch effect, we now have two basic starting attacks. Additionally, I felt a defense move was necessary, so I made a little shield if you press the S key. At this point, it's time to add the first enemy, and after debating the irony, I decided level 1 should be the Earth Master. About one week later and a little selective productivity, I for the main part completed the level 1 gameplay. The Earthmaster has two main attacks, the first being a rock throw that's auto-aimed at you. It can be blocked with a shield or dodged generally. Secondly, I gave the Earthmaster a spike move that summons three spiky things that will deal damage as long as you touch them. You'll also notice I made a jetpack move that lets the player fly around for about two seconds, but later I removed them because I thought it looked too animated and too unnatural. Obviously, I added some other things such as the health bar, which if I'm being honest, it's just a sprite that I borrowed from a health bar engine, um, but don't worry, I did get credit. Other than that, you might see a little particle effect from the fire punch, and going back in this edit, it was a pretty cool detail, I don't really remember why I removed it. Oh, and also, originally the Earth Master did have a third move, which is supposed to be this wall raise that blocks fire attacks and acts as a barrier. The only problem was this wall accidentally traps the player sometimes, which is why I kind of removed it from the code. It's still there, but it has a pretty small chance of actually being used. After finishing that, it's finally time to move on to level 2, which after flipping a coin, the Air Master gets selected. I had no clue in what color to make the airbender in, I honestly didn't want to do orange or yellow, so for now he's gonna wear this Komodo thing that he actually looks like an airbender. And I know it's kind of inconsistent with the other characters, but I'm not really focusing on art right now. Mainly my, her mainly my priority is finishing the central gameplay. One productive work session later, and the air master is kinda complete. Um, his first move is always gonna be an airball chase, and he's shooting air blasts while doing it. Honestly, I don't really know how to draw air, so I use the same particle effect from the fire guy and just turn the particles into these like gray transparent things. And to make it a little more realistic, this move deals a little bit of knockback. Again, the air blasts can be blocked using the shield, though they really don't deal a ton of damage. For the air master's second move, I just imported the air ball costumes from the chase and just enlarged them to make this mega hamster ball, which pushes you back and deals a little damage. Remember that I said that with each master you defeat, you unlock a new skill. For defeating the earth master, you'll unlock the burn ray skill, which is essentially just lighting stuff on fire. After drawing some beautiful flames, you have a nice little animation, and to activate the move, simply press R. If you're having trouble defeating air, it's likely because you're not using the skill. When he's just sitting there blasting air at you, jump in at the perfect moment to hit him with the burn. By now, you've probably already noticed this blue bar in the top right corner, and it's actually a whole new core mechanic. Earlier, we were using a cooldown system, where the player would have to wait before using another move. However, this bar represents your energy, and after assigning each skill move a cost when activated, we don't need a cooldown anymore, as the bar will automatically refill itself. As I said before, the fire blast is a basic move, which is why it costs the least energy. The new burn race is a much more effective, so it will deplete almost half of your energy. This new system really forces the player to strategize and time their attacks. Believe it or not, air was probably one of the hardest ones to make because half of my beta playtesters said it was way too easy and the other half said it was nearly impossible. So yeah, I did have a little trouble trying to mediate the difficulty, but other than that, I think we can move on to the next master. Since we're not doing a fire one, the last one before the avatar is water. I honestly could have made this one just blue, but I really liked the way the airbender character looked, so I applied a similar theme. Instead of two main attacks like the previous benders, I gave the water master three. The first was an icicle throw, summoning three spears and launching them consecutively. The second was a water wave with this crispy particle effect, which deals damage and pushback. Lastly, a water launch attack that's similar to the fire blast, but has slightly different physics. All of these moves can be blocked with the shield. But speaking of the shield, I did make a little animation for the block so the user knows when the defense is active. 
For defeating the Air Master, the player will unlock the Combustion Shot skill move, which is basically a rocket launcher. The thing that's special about the skill move is that in order to explode it, it must touch the wall or the ground. This basically means it can go through the enemy without the enemy taking any damage, since it only loses health from the explosion. What this also means is if you want to use it effectively, you have to jump and shoot it mid-air so the bullet points downward at the enemy effectively hit it in the ground. The reason I nerfed it like this was because it was just way too easy if you just spam it. Other than that, I didn't really make any changes worth noting, meaning we can finally move on to the final boss, the Avatar. Honestly though, the Avatar itself wasn't really hard, um, it was honestly just copying a bunch of the previous code from all the masters together. Um, every single move I've already described to you, including the firebending ones, are used in this battle. Um, it wouldn't be much of a boss fight without a second stage, and you've probably guessed it, the Avatar state. When you first begin the fight, the Avatar will run around for a little using the basic moves from the previous benders. Um, it's honestly not too hard to beat, but once the Avatar's health is less than 20%, he heals up and its attacks become mega charged. For example, the regular Earth Spike contains 3 pointy things, but the Avatar Spike will create 8, which is virtually impossible to dodge. Similarly, it can summon a water wave twice as tall as the one as the waterbender, which forces you to block instead of just jumping over it. Along with these, some of its other attacks are buffs, such as the Fire Blast. And no, it's not supposed to be easy, it's literally the boss fight. It's supposed to be hard. I tried my best to make the game non-rage quittable, but obviously I can clearly see some little kid getting beat up by the fairly simple AI. Um, it's actually not that simple. You would think the avatar would take the longest, but honestly coding it was simple, but I spent a majority of the time just fixing bugs um, and kind of just messing around with the avatar state to see what works best. Oh, and for defeating the water master, you'll receive the lightning strike ability, and it's exactly what it sounds like. After a little charge, it sends lightning with a very high hit rate. Um, and it deals a decent amount of damage, and I don't really have any tips for using this specifically, but I can agree it's a pretty effective weapon, and I really suggest using it. So the gameplay is finally finished, all three masters plus the avatar, but the project doesn't feel like a finished game, and that's because there's no home screen, no start page, no instructions, or any UI in general. To start, we can finally delete this boring black background, um, and actually have a place to fight. Since I wanted the setting to be specific to its master, I made the Earth's settings a grassland, air a desert, water a polar region, and the avatar this Japanese pillar place thing. After adding a blue background and some cloud effects in the back layer, the feel of the game becomes a lot more fun and lively. Next I began designing some starting screen art and I came up with some pretty cool designs. Making the interface was fairly easy and it took a little work in Canva, but I managed to make it look pretty seamless and smooth. And after I linked the gameplay to the UI, the whole project actually feels like a game. To finish it off, I found a sick drum track and some crispy sound effects. And honestly, since this project is so freaking large, there's so many details that it would honestly be impossible to cover them all, which is why I really recommend you check out the game yourself, which is the link in the description. Um, again, I'm really sorry for the delayed posting, um, but I'm working on a lot larger videos, and hopefully some more collabs in the future. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.